Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about black hole collisions, but more specifically a very unusual galaxy we've discovered very recently that actually has three supermassive black holes on a collision course. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So not so long ago, we've talked about a galaxy we've discovered that may help us answer the so-called final parsec problem. I've talked about this idea of the problem uh, with the supermassive black hole collisions in one of the recent videos. And when we've discovered a galaxy that had not two but three supermassive black holes, this gave us hope to try to explain this unusual phenomenon of supermassive black hole collisions. In a nutshell, what the problem refers to is the idea that at some point the two supermassive black holes may get so close to one another that they no longer will actually be able to come any closer, simply because um, at a distance of about three to four light years they will be close enough to one another that there's not going to be anything in between them to help them come any closer. So check out the video on final parsec problem if you'd like to learn more. But then we started discovering galaxies that had not two, but three supermassive black holes. And these galaxies do give us a lot of hope. Simply because by having three black holes, the final parsec problem sort of solves itself. If you have three massive black holes, then they'll eventually collide with one another, forming one supermassive black hole. And the way to understand this easily is right here in Universe Sandbox. We have two supermassive black holes, and as soon as I add the third one of exactly the same mass, doesn't matter where I place it, you'll see that almost right away the system will destabilize and the black holes will either collide with one another or they'll probably just kind of get kicked out of the system. And as you can see, the just collision happened almost right away. So this solves the final parsec problem and the galaxy that was just recently discovered, actually that's not the correct way of saying this, the galaxy that we've known about for a long time but that we have recently re-examined, and this galaxy right here that you can see in X-ray light definitely has something mysterious going on in the middle and we've just realized that it was actually three black holes. So here it's very obvious that there are two at least. And uh, these two supermassive black holes were quite well known and quite well studied. The galaxy here is known as NGC 6240 and as you can see in this beautiful image from the beautiful Hubble telescope that took quite a lot of various shots of this galaxy, it has a lot of activity on the inside and it has what's known as an irregular shape. Here is what a random irregular galaxy would look like if we were to try to generate this using Universe Sandbox 2 simulation. And essentially these galaxies haven't really acquired shape yet because something has recently happened to them. In the case of NGC 6240, all of this relates to other similar galactic collisions. So in other words, this shape was formed through collisions of at least two different galaxies. And you can see we've discovered a lot of these systems that do possess very similar features. Now, in case of NGC 6240, you'll notice that it's in a further stage. It basically collided a little bit more than some of the other galaxies and uh, discovery of two black holes in there was not really a big deal. But it turns out that the galaxy itself seems to contain another black hole from the third galaxy that collided with NGC 6240. In other words, it's a collection of three different galaxies coming from three directions and in the middle of those galaxies, within about 3000 light years of the center, there are three supermassive black holes. And as this study that you can find in the description below suggests, there are basically three black holes in the final stage of collision. And more specifically, when looking at the center of this galaxy, it becomes somewhat apparent that there are three very massive and very active regions, two of which are relatively close to one another already. The third one here will eventually make its way toward the other two as well. In other words, it's another unusual triple black hole galaxy that once again helps us explain how these massive galactic mergers happen. Now, in terms of the speed of the galactic merger, the galaxies seem to be moving toward one another at a speed of about 100 or so kilometers per second, which is actually a little bit slower than the speed that Andromeda will be moving toward Milky Way when they collide as well. And as you may know, uh, the Andromeda galaxy and the Milky Way galaxy are expected to merge in roughly around four and a half or so billion years from now. So, in a while. 
But before then, we'll actually very likely experience another collision with the third galaxy. In other words, a very similar shape and a very similar um, situation will happen in the Milky Way as well. In approximately, I guess, four to five billion years from now, it might actually resemble something like this. Because the three galaxy, Andromeda, Milky Way, and the always forgotten Triangulum Galaxy, the third largest galaxy nearby, will all collide and create one massive irregular galaxy, while also probably turning the Milky Way into an extremely active quasar. But the main difference between the Milky Way galaxy and NGC 6240 is the mass of the actual black holes. In comparison to Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole in the middle of our own galaxy, the black holes inside NGC 6240 are like ridiculously large. Each of these black holes has a mass of at least 90 million masses of the sun, which is at least uh, 20 times larger than the Milky Way's black hole. So all of these galaxies will eventually merge into a tremendously large ultramassive black hole. But the other main difference between this merger and the one that will happen in our own galaxy is that the Milky Way, Andromeda and Triangulum galaxy mergers, actually let's just put Triangulum in here so that we now have three galaxies colliding, so, with the Milky Way and Andromeda, they both have relatively large black holes as well. But in the Triangulum Galaxy, as you may have seen in one of my previous videos, we haven't really found anything. Today, the scientists believe that Triangulum might be one of those rare galaxies that do not possess a supermassive black hole, at least nothing bigger than 3000 masses of the Sun. Now, the video I made previously explains this in a little bit more detail, so do check it out somewhere right there. But, in every other sense, this might be the image, or something like this might be the image of the future Milky Way Andromeda. Eventually, it will probably merge and create another very large but also very active spiral galaxy like you see right here. And then it will settle and become something similar to what it is now, but tremendously large and very, very massive. Also, during this time, because of all of the energy released by these very, very massive black holes, it's very likely that, similarly to NGC 6240, the galaxy will be just too active to potentially host any life. So if we're still around, or if life is still around on Earth and it's intelligent enough, it might want to consider leaving, or at least finding a way to protect itself from all of this dangerous radiation. But other than that, that's really it. So we discovered another triple black hole galaxy that seems to be really unusual and very interesting, and helps us explain a mystery that we couldn't really explain before. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.